I saw your course was was April. Things uh, de definitely didn't go your way that night. I guess what was the process for you just kind of getting over it, taking that first setback? Uh, nothing. Just going back, seeing what I did wrong, and we fixed it, and now we're back. Did you take any time away? Was it difficult for you at all, or was it a thing where you had to get back in there right away? No, I mean, I, I know I'm ready, so I'm going to go out there September 16th, prove why I'm still active because I am who I say I am, so I'm going to go out there and show it to myself. What were the biggest lessons you took out of that night? Um, a lot of mistakes. There was a lot of, I can't even count, so, you know, but it was my fault. My team did the work. Everybody did the work except me, you know, so it was on me. I know a loss is never a good thing, but in some ways, does it maybe take some pressure off your shoulders or all these expectations on you as this young kid, undefeated? Does it maybe take a little bit out of your shoulders? Um, not really. There was never no pressure. Like I said, I'm, a, I'm my own process. I'm my own journey. I only see gold, so everything else, it doesn't really matter to me. Very nice. We'll be back now, and you're part of this awesome uh, Noche UFC event. Uh, talk to me about what that means to you to be associated with this event celebrating Mexican Independence Day. Uh, it's a very special day. You know, I'm glad I was able to get on the card and share it with a couple other Mexican people. You know, I know there's going to be a lot of Mexican people on T-Mobile. So I'm excited to go out there and put on the show for all my people. All right, so last thing for me, what, what is the goal for you, right? Is it to go out there and just dominate, put on something clinical, or maybe is it to put on a little war? You know, the, the Mexican fans love that fighting spirit. You want to kind of put on one of those back and forth type of shows. We'll see what my opponent brings, you know, but I'm going to go out there and show everything I can. I'm going to go out there and prove to myself I am who I say I am. So whatever my opponent brings, you know, I'm ready for war. I'm ready to go on the three rounds, dominate, or I'm ready to finish them. You know, I'm ready for whatever. So, you know, the, and uh, Mexican Independence Day has always been big in Nevada for fights. Have you ever gone as a kid growing up? Did you go to fights to watch on uh, that holiday? Uh, not really. I only watched on TV. We didn't have a lot of money when I was little. So now my family can go out and this time watch me perform. So it's going to be a blessing. What was it like then? Because I know sometimes when you get all the Mexican people together to watch a fight, it can be really wild when a big star is fighting. What was that like at your house when you were watching one of the big you know, Canelo Alvarez or whoever might have been fighting. Yeah, when I watched the Superstar fight on TV, it was great because I knew I was going to be one of them soon. So now I'm going to, I'm on my way to become a superstar and I just can't wait for everybody to watch it. You said to John that you made a lot of mistakes and that it, too many to count. Were the mistakes mental mistakes or was there, they physical mistakes Were things that you trained from and you just didn't execute? Um, it was more physical. I just wasn't there, but it was my fault. You know, I was supposed to show up April 8th, that was my job and I failed. So I just went back to the drawing board and checked why, why I couldn't perform like I usually do and correct also the mistakes that I did on that night. Do you feel you lost something like, in, you maybe had an intimidation power over some people because there was so much hype behind you and a lot of guys were like, whoa, you know, I'm fighting this guy that the UFC believes in so much. Since that loss, do you think maybe people will look at you differently? I mean, I, I did lose some stuff, you know, uh, some opportunities I think I lost with that fight. Um, but not, not about, I don't, I don't really care about fighters being intimidated by me because I'm going to always go out there and, and do what I do anyways. So just some opportunities I think that I lost with that fight. Business-wise? Yeah, business-wise. On the business-wise, I lost some opportunities. What about goal? You know, do you have to reset goals? Because I'm sure one of your goals was probably to be an undefeated champion, right? So that goes by the wayside. Uh, but have you readjusted your goal? And is there any primary goal for you right now? Um, yeah, that, that was one of my goals to retire undefeated, but um, now I have one loss on my record, but I'm just going to keep it like that, one loss on my record, and I'm going to go out there and just make it, uh, every other dream that I have come true. Two other questions for me. Number, number one, in the immediate aftermath of the loss, were you shocked? Like, did it surprise you at, at the way Christian fought and, and how well he did? Um, no, I wasn't surprised. I, I knew he was going to fight like that, but he was able to go out there and stay composed. Um, I didn't see him like rush anything, so he did good on his job. His team did a great, great job studying me, so it, it, it was just my fault that I lost. You know? Do you think, and I don't mean this with any malice, but do you think you need to be humbled a little bit? Like, you know, you were riding really high. Do you think that a dose of humility is probably not bad for a young fighter? Um, not really. In, 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 my, in my book, I've always been humble, just confident. I'm just saying, like, what I think, I'm just speaking it because I know it's real, so. Um, I still think the same way. That didn't change my mentality. That just the only thing that I lost changed was my record, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Bro, I'm sure you saw a bunch of fans turn on you after your loss. How did that make you feel? Like what? Like just like the fans, like yeah, you had so many fans, and then, and then of course.
course you lose and they're like, oh, it just sucks. He's a fraud. Like, did that annoy you? Uh, not really. We all know how this sport is. Every time I watched, uh, as a kid, I watched superstars lose because superstars sometimes grow and lose. And we all saw how, like, the fans will turn away. You know, even if you're like Khabib, he comes back and he loses his next fight, everybody will turn the back on him, you know? So it's always been like that. That's how the sport is. So I'm not surprised about it. What do you think of Sean O'Malley's win over, over Aljamain? It was a, a good win. You know, he did good work on Aljamain. Um, and it, it brings new, like, hype into the division. I think he's a good, because uh, he's a, like a superstar. He's actually entertaining to watch. So it's going to be, but I don't think he holds the belt for like more than three fights. So it's going to be good to see how the bantamweight division unfolds. Okay. Did you end up buying your mom a minivan? Yeah, I got my mom. <laughs> and hopefully I, I, I'm able to get him more stuff. A new minivan? Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't buy, you didn't go to the used car lot, did you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know, but whatever she wants, I'm going to get it. So, so I'm just going to keep working for her and my family and get them whatever they want. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You.